throwing us down and under. But it is time for Shiny Side Out with Dave and Mecky. So I hope you have your tinfoil hat all made and cinched down tight over your ears. So take it away, Dave and Mecky. Hello and welcome. And Mackie on WZZR broadcasting from Australia for Revolution Radio on, on Revolution dot Radio, where it's more than just radio. So jump in the chat room while I'm trying to. If you can, I can't at the moment. Uh, show number three hundred and sixty, I think it is. Correct. And uh, Dave, we're talking about mm -hmm. high strangeness and black budgets. Uh, that's what that is. That's what that is. And um, it's on air, online, and on your smart device. Smart device, yes. So grab an app to listen anywhere or listen at home on a Grace Tabletop Digital Radio or any digital radio, really. If you missed Solaris's show, I hope you didn't. I did. I just went back to the city. And she had Dan Willis, I believe, and they were talking about uh, UFO disclosure and Perception management. Perception management, very interesting term. I want to talk about that after the second. Um, no, no, but if you did miss it, uh, it only costs $5.95 a month to archives. And all of the archives, for the matter, uh, in future and in past. So not just for that month, but everything that's in the archives is yours to listen to and enjoy. From all the hosts, not just us or Solaris, but all the hosts. There's some awesome stuff. In yeah, so if you've got five dollars on your that's great. You support the station as well. This is listener funded radio, meaning that uh, we don't get any corporate sponsorships. There's no uh, corporate banner flying anywhere near us. We don't have uh, any offices in any in any city <laughs> that we know of. Um, and uh, also all the hosts, as far as I know, are doing this pro bono, gratis for free. So if you do enjoy this uh, radio station, please um, support the station at Nighthawk. Uh, I would like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land in Australia, where I am and where Dave is, and for me that's the, the rock people, and for you my friend... The Dark and Young? The Dark, dark and Young indeed. And we pay our respects to others past, present and future. This is not a gimmick, this is something that is uh, taking root in Australia as a thing to, to do. Um, it is acknowledging the continuous habitation of this continent, as far as we can tell at least, for some uh, 80,000 generations. So it's going back a long time. It's, 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 a, it's a long, long time into the past. We were still in caves, or again in caves, or intermittently in caves in Europe <laughs> when Australia was populated. And, and in fact, um, yeah, it has been populated for a long, long time. An unbroken line. The oral tradition of the Australian original people is uh, also unbroken and some very interesting stories. If you have any interest in the, in the, in the subject, I urge you to, to go out and to do some research. It's, it's really interesting. It's fascinating stuff. Uh, the dream time especially. The concept of the dream time. Um, Sydney has been crazy, Dave. Uh, the weather is uh, all over the shop. We had a drop of uh, 20 degrees Celsius, which is in a half, so it was at 40, and then it was at 20, mm -hmm. it was about 45, and then 24. And uh, it's just gone back up today. It's gone up to uh, over 30 again mm -hmm. for Sydney. Um, it's insane. And there's this one thing um, before I throw you the, the talking stick, my friend. It, America, or the United States specifically, have experienced some extremely cold weather. Um, uh, yeah, thank, thanks, Captain Obvious. Thanks, Mikey, for telling us. <laughs> um, I don't want to tell, that's not what I want to test. That's not what I want to tell you. Uh, that's not uh, what I want to tell you. What I want to tell you is this. I listened to a very uh, interesting um, radio uh, interview uh, on my way just around in the car and listen to the radio. It's, it's, that's what I do. It's, it's a good thing to do. So that's the thing. Um, Have the cold weather that you have had it, and people are saying, "Oh, you know, it's it's uh, you know climate uh, warming. Or how can it be climate? How can how can it be warming if, if it's getting colder?" So so we don't like to talk about global warming. We like to talk about global climate change, which which uh, is, is very hard to deny at this point. Uh, just as a segue, sorry, as, as an aside here, uh, every day virtually 
we have broken a temperature record in Australia every day. Mm -hmm. Every day there's a new record. And, and this is, if it's just one in one place, isolated, you go out, you know, so what? Uh, you know, this is now as, as hot as it was in Adelaide 100 years ago over here. But then, the next, then bang, it's hot over, it's hot, it's the hottest over here, it's the hottest over there, it's the hottest cumulatively. Not just isolated spots, but cumulatively, it's, it's just, in fact, the 15 you know, so hot, it's the hottest uh, um, place uh, the week before last were mm -hmm. in Australia. So it's, it's getting hotter. It's getting hard. Uh, but my point is that they explained why there's cold weather. So, so we're talking about climate change, right? Uh, very quickly. Um, and it, while it might seem incongruous and, and, and illogical to, to see colder weather, it makes perfect sense once you understand the explanation. So in the Arctic, especially, there's, there's something uh, um, like, like a temperature zone, like a frigid zone. It's freezing cold, obviously, right? It's the Arctic. It's cold, cold, cold. But there is something that contains that cold. It's called, it's, 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 the, it's the jet streams, but let's think of it as, as rivers of wind. Rivers of wind. That's, that's how the scientists explained it. And they're circling uh, the, these extremely cold areas in, in the Arctic. In now, isolation. What global warming, yeah, yeah. yeah. But what global warming has done, it has warmed up the Arctic as well. And what happened as a consequence is these rivers of wind have lost speed and intensity. And due to that loss of speed and intensity, some of the cold air leaked out and pushed into the Northern Hemisphere, uh, Europe and, and specifically North America. So the, the extreme cold weather that, that has been, it's, it's, it's extreme. We're talking like 45 degrees Celsius, minus, mm -hmm. minus 45 degrees Celsius. If water freezes at zero, degrees zero right so minus one that's that's cold minus 10 is cold minus 45 is crazy cold mm -hmm. there are people people died several people have died mm -hmm. in fact i think maybe as much as many as 20 or so have died because of um, the freezing a student was found outside uh, i can't remember the dorm it was might have been his dorm it might have been the, the library i can't remember he was frozen to death they found a student a college student i should say frozen I don't know any other uh, uh, circumstances. I don't know what happened or how or why, but they found this this this, this kid uh, frozen to death. Now, if if you're a movie buff and you've seen the day after tomorrow, mm -hmm. what I just what I just described to you is in fact exactly or almost exactly what happened in that movie. The, except that in the movie the cold air was sucked in from space, right? So that's not really the case here. It just is it's the cold. All there that America is experiencing at the moment is, is a bleed from the Arctic Circle. That's what's happening. But it's a direct effect of global warming because, like I said, the global warming has, has uh, also warmed the Arctic Circle, therefore lessening the intensity and the speed of the jet streams there and, and, and uh, the, these rivers of wind that keep the cold air in check. Um, it's astounding to see this, and it's not going to get any better. It's just, in fact, we don't even know. If we've reached the end point of this quite yet, imagine if it gets worse. Just, just take a step back for a second. I don't, I'm not, I don't want to. I'm not an alarmist. I'm not. I'm really not. But right now, 45 degrees. That's minus. Right. That's that's cold. Okay. That's very very cold. In Australia, 45 plus. So you've got a 90 degree in Celsius, 90 degree variance in temperature. Right. Um, for Australia, we were talking about uh, shutting down uh, non-essential. A grids and non-essential uh, power consumption units, whatever it might be, right? in your house, you know, turn it off, you don't use it, you know, if you don't use the air conditioning, turn it off, because we are in danger of getting blackouts or brownouts, because our, our grid won't be able to handle it, right? Now, if this gets hotter, and all in the case And not only that, we're experiencing some serious droughts, and there's some really, really bad fires. California, same thing in your uh, summer, when, when it happened for you. Same with Europe, really bad storms, really bad heat waves. And these are no longer isolated incidences, right? These are now happening all the time. Not, not every year, but virtually, right? Pretty but much. for Australia, the, the heat is annual. It's a thing, right? Um, our winter and summers have shifted. So our winters last longer. Uh, and our summers start later, oddly enough. Um, it's very strange, but they're more intense. Okay, the heat here is unbearable. Um, it really is. It's, it's, it's hot. It's super hot. I mean, nothing lives in, in 45 degrees. And um, it's, it's not... Now a thing where we have to just accept it as, as our weather. This is now the weather. This is the climate. That's that's where we're living. There's no going back to a pre-change climate. This is 
unless you know some has, someone has got a miraculous uh, technological cure for all of it, you know, which is possible, not likely, but possible. So we should really prepare for this because there will be blackouts, there will be brownouts, winters will be much worse. It's like they say in the, in the Game of Thrones, winter is coming. Yeah, oh yeah, it's coming. Oh right? yeah. Our, our winters in the northern hemisphere, at least, are going to get a lot colder because of the global war. Right? The scientists, uh, she was cute. Great, she was really, really good, and the way she uh, explained it all. <laughs> and again, you know, I, I'm I'm all for science, and I'm just saying that you know, empirical science can't be used to, to study every phenomenon. It just can't. There's limitations. Um, but but um, yeah, so we need to get used to this now. This is what it is. We, we we really have to understand. There is no going back. I I assume uh, that you know, um, in Sydney and certainly Australia overall is, is going to get a lot. Hotter, Adelaide. All, this is not just cities. This is the heat is all over Australia. All the capital cities and all the land, land in between. Australia is not that densely populated, right? Uh, all the capital cities, and and and, uh, and like I said, all the bushland, all the countryside, they are all experiencing high temperatures. This is not an isolated uh, Sydney event or Perth event or whatever. It's all over the continent. It's hot, hot, hot. Two years ago, I actually know, two or three years ago maybe four years ago, I was in Singapore and I saw something that had never happened before. Uh, the, the taxi driver, and in Singapore everybody, every taxi driver has to be Singaporean. They all have to be Singaporean, right? Yeah, yeah believe that. It's, it's incredible, right? Imagine that in New York. Every, every, every cab driver has to be American. Anyway, but the point is, <laughs> they all have to be uh, Singaporean. So he said he's lived there all his life, right? You know, we, we're chatting. I said, what, what's going on here? So what, what, what I observed was everything was dry. The trees were dying, the plants were dry, dying, the grass was dying. It's, Singapore is tropical. It rains and it's a lush vegetation. It's, it's beautiful, verdant. You know, it's, it's a, it is a really vibrant, a green, different kinds of green a kind of uh, environment, you know, like a jungle kind of environment. Very nice. Um, but that particular time, like I said, it was all dry and dying. He, was, he has never seen anything like it, he said. There's this massive drought. Oh, it's been dry for months. Hasn't rained. It hasn't rained at the equator. Now I'm not saying this happened last year, you know, or every year, but it, it did happen two or three years ago. It did. It happened. It was a thing. It happened. It's normal. I was in Singapore recently, and it's all nice and green again. It rains every day, and quite a bit actually. But my point is, these these things could become more frequent, and I, I don't know what it means for the rest of the. Week. These 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 shifts and changes in weather are really really strange. What Dave and I are. Uh, Science of weather manipulation. A friend of the show, uh, Hovi, I don't know if you're listening, Hovi, but uh, shout out to you. And thanks for posting on the Chinese Hello Facebook page. He posted uh, some kind of weather control um, That's right. uh, evidence, you know, uh, radar, radar images that, that's, that, sh that really strange in Australia. Sorry, I should say in Australia, in, specifically in Brisbane, in, in Queensland, which, which seem uh, like to, to these days. These effects, these weather effects, seem to originate from a spot, and they seem to push out weather or mm -hmm. push weather yeah, away in a way from mm -hmm. central. Very strange. Like, and imagine outwards. Yeah, it's like it's like it's like a bubble expanding from somewhere out of nothing, right? And pushing weather away. Well, well, Dave knows something similar. In Go yes. ahead. Sorry, Mickey. Sorry for doing that. Um, no, no, no. Go you're ahead. absolutely yeah. right. So I've seen exactly the same thing on the Doppler in Sydney. Well. Matter of fact, off the central coast, between Sydney and the central coast, where it affects both Sydney, it looks like some uh, attempts to prevent storms from, you know, becoming so significant because the storms that we get have, you know, uh, five hundred million dollars worth of damage, nearly a billion dollars worth of damage. They're getting worse. The storms are getting worse. The damage is getting worse. The winds, are, wind speeds from the storms are going up. The hail size is increasing. You know, we had uh, tennis ball sized hail recently, and that just in, in three waves, and it trounced the the cities, right? The towns that it went through. It just absolutely clobbered them. And I was lucky; I was between two of these storms and made it home, and uh, I was safe. But you know, when it hails inside the shopping center, inside it, inside a roofed shopping center, because it's busting through the roofs. That's something else, you know, where, if there's nowhere to hide. It, it makes me think about that underground town in Turkey, Mickey, why people might ask the question, why would they go build underground? I know why. <laughs> One reason, yeah. hail. Hail will oh. kill you, right? Oh, that's it. 
Well, so so uh -huh. yes, Ho Hovey did a great job p posting that, and um, and do you know what? There's already announcements that 2019 is going to be the year they start to cool down the sun. Well, in respect to the Earth, by clouding it, clouding between us and the sun, to restrict its amount of energy the kilojoules of energy hitting the earth's surface they're going to reduce it they're going to begin those experiments good luck with that so i try to tell you <laughs> I tr my point to everybody who wants to argue go ahead and argue do your research then start uh, then start having a good discussion with me because i have stood on this for a long time that the amount of energy at the earth's surface from the sun has increased is increasing and it doesn't look like there's any stop to that at the moment and everyone says oh global warming is is man-made i said i'm not going to argue about the cause i'm looking at the data mm -hmm. and i see the data the data says there's more kilojoules at the earth's surface now if you can describe to me how carbon is doing that yeah fine go ahead prove it to me give me an example do a fish tank and show me how you can increase it and you'll fail so until you do that, don't. And the other thing is, if there's more carbon in the air where it's hotter, I'll believe you. That if there's less where it isn't so hot, I'll believe you. Prove me wrong. Mm -hmm. All right. So, so, so we're seeing direct weather manipulation done at a level by probably harp is my best guess because it can heat up a column of air expanding out pushing outwards uh, up into the stratosphere and then turning off that radio frequency collapses it bringing with it a down burst of cool air from the upper atmosphere makes total sense that this is possible and in operation however no one's going to claim responsibility for actually doing it because then they can get blamed for things that happen as a result of it. No one's going to be taking that. There you go. There right? you go. So, so yes. yep. imagine five hundred million dollars worth of lawsuit from an insurance company against some poor little company that's registered as a weather modifier, right? So no one wants that kind of heat. No one's going to claim success or failure. Should it work or not work? And I think that's that's very very strong evidence seeing the actual doppler seeing the seeing a news item about that that we're seeing people declaring they're going to start cooling mm -hmm. down the sun trying to and make waves towards trying to cool down our planet right now i'm mecky's science mm -hmm. interview and all of that information he brought forward at the top of the show are awesome to be honest um, describing that mm. polar vortex and how that works and we know the northern hemisphere would pretty much turn into an ice block if the ocean conveyor failed because that's supplying warm water and blah 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 and keeping it sort of like a radiator right once that radiator is turned off you're going to get cold as well but mm -hmm. you're going to get cold as it warms yeah. up so yeah. don't don't think for a minute that you were going into another ice yeah. age it's only from your perspective Correct. So back to you in the studio. <laughs> no, no, like, uh, no, like that, that, that's right. That's, that's, that it, it's really something that we need to uh, understand. And I, I do believe that the uh, the weather manipulation that we seem to be witnessing is, is working uh, uh, to, to maybe ameliorate some of the effects uh, of of or extreme weather that we've been experiencing. We, we, are, we are now getting the, the, the worst uh, and no one can argue with that anymore, right? I mean, for the last, just look at the last couple of years. Look at the last couple of years. Look at the, at the horrific impact that, that uh, the weather has had on the world. One, fires everywhere. Horrific. Even in America, in, in, in California, the, 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 the town of Paradise. Tasmania's yeah. on fire. But the town of Paradise, I know, I know, 
So, wait, so right, right, right now, wait, wait, wait. Town of Paradise was yeah. wiped out. You're right. You're, oh, absolutely, you're right. Uh, yeah. So right now we've got floods in the world, fires in the world, record temperatures in both sides, cooling and heating. Yeah, we've got droughts. So we've got too much rain, not enough rain, too hot, too cold. If you can tell me another weather extreme that we should be yeah. that we haven't got right now, I don't know. I don't think it exists. We have to make a new one up. I was watching a documentary, Mackie, this week, and it was about weather and the history of weather since the 90s. And they said that the the elevation in uh, Atlantic storms coming into the US has increased so much they had to make a new definition out of it. And that's why they're saying, well, why can't we have a Cat 6 one? We, we got Cat 5. We, we just, let's make Cat 6 then. Oh, you can't have Cat 6. Remember that discussion we had? Can't have Cat 6. Why not? Well, it, it described the next level. Oh, we're not into that? Yes, we are. We have, we're, we've equaled the amount of increase from the previous Cat 1, Cat 2, Cat 3, Cat 4, Cat 5. And now we've hit what should be Cat 6, but there's a restriction where they say, oh, we can't really name it that because there isn't such a thing. Well, we'll just make it one. In Australia, we just we just make yeah. new, we make new colours yeah. on the map. It, it, we added black and now they've got, was it pink? Is the next colour above that? Yeah. So... So black was 45 to 50 and pink is above 50. And now they've got that on the map. It's nuts. So if you, if you think the last 100, 100 years of records where we ended up with really nice stable weather and great crop growing weather and, you know, great for food supply, predictable. Yeah, we've had some minor droughts, which are minor compared to the one we've got now. But where's it going to go? And this is the climate refugee thing that we bring yeah. up all the time. What is your country going to do? Now, um, mm -hmm. as a segue, say that all that information I talked about last week about Stone being indicted and Brennan and Clapper and McCabe and Baker and Comey, guess who tweeted that? Not even a couple of hours after our show, Mickey. Donald Trump himself. <laughs> really? he, he tweeted Is that the, right? the, yes absolutely the exact thing that I spoke about including all of those names he tweeted it himself <laughs> so you, know, oh, you, you managed to get in the chat room um, so I, I'm, I'm sort of off the hook now right that this has already been said it's been said it's been said by no, the United, but, States, the United States of America but maybe he, maybe he listened but maybe what? he listened to our show and then do you know what? If Donald like Trump compelled. is listening to this Maybe show, listen to our show. Yeah. if he listens to this show, I would say, look, please make contact with me. And I would I would love to hear some or if you're just going to tweet, I'll just follow the tweets. But if you if you know, if you've got uh, an opinion or an attitude towards something that you'd like to make public, I'm absolutely there's a platform for you. And that, that goes for any president of the United States, for that matter. Um, <laughs> this, this, we're living in times that you would not have ever dreamt we would ever be in right now. Mm, I don't know. But no, go on. <laughs> no, you know where we go. I'm going with this, right? So there's no way yeah. that, know that knowing now what technology does, I would have been in the streets with a horn and an A-frame saying, you know, let's not do this technology thing because we're all going to be phone zombies, right? Going to be fombies, is it? And you're all going, ah, oh, Dave, don't be silly, you're an idiot. That's never going to happen. But we, we are. There was one guy on the train on Friday that I was looking at that didn't have his head buried in, in his phone. And he was looking around the other passengers like me. Because every once in a while I look down, I start you know, doing something, and then I try, I'm going to look out the window, I'm going to smell the roses, I'm going to do the, I'm going to do the right thing. I'm not, I'm not trying to not use my phone as much as that I, you know, I want to try and get away from it. It's an addiction that I'm trying to, not kick, but control. 
and it's very difficult i have to i must say but here we are we're in a in a world now there's no newspapers it's only phones people do whatever they want and it's so me 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 i i'm astounded by the amount of me that there is because it's there's no collective you know the newspaper on the train it's a collective amount of people doing the same thing and now there's no copying there's no people doing the same thing there might be one or two doing facebook but some are reading a newspaper article some are watching videos some are listening to music and it's all about the me no but, but, but what do we, we do have actually actively we we've actually We've actually worked towards that, though. So there's, there's been an active movement towards what you've just described, right? Mm -hmm. It's in a way, it's a, it's it's the the um, completely elevated ego to to almost to a, um, a status of a deity. And I mean this very seriously because in the olden days, we we used to share a lot of things as people. You know, we used to share transport, we used to share experiences. In Germany. I know every Saturday um, in something in summer, uh, 8 p.m., the, the, the streets would be empty because there'd be some uh, uh, show on TV that everybody watches. Like imagine that 60 million people are watching the same show. Yeah. Um, and it's only you know it's it's hard to to fathom these days. And, and, and you're right, paper. You know we all read the same paper. All we there's, there's some of us that read this paper and some of us that read that paper. We're all reading a, a, a paper. You know, for four or five pages. Person, you know, and this is, is a, again a collective experience. And um, now we're in the age of the individual experience, completely individualized. Everything we do is now completely up to us. We can still choose to have the collective experience if we go to a concert or a movie, or if we go to a sporting event, or if we choose to watch a sporting event when it's being broadcast live. You know, we can still have that experience as a collective more or less but for the most part what you described Dave is the individual experience to do what you want when you want and uh, where you want right be a smart device an in device or you know whatever you want to do however you want to hook into the um, the net because everything is on these days right mm. everything is connected to you somehow certainly in the first world and it is it is that drive away from 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 the collective or from the community feeling that is being encouraged um, there's been a deliberate at the same time a um, drive to destroy the family unit. There's been a deliberate drive to destroy proper education. There has been a deliberate drive to destroy proper food. There has been a deliberate drive to destroy a, a common understanding of history, or at least a common approach to history. Uh, and, and I don't mean someone's point of view. What I mean is an open an informed discussion of history, not, not not someone's opinion, but rather research things. Right, so that's what we are seeing. Um, we are completely individualized and and shut out from each other, and we welcome it. We love it. And like uh, Dave, you're right. I mean, I, I love it when I go to a restaurant and I see people on the phone, like this a group of four, five, six people. Sometimes more, sometimes two. When it's two, I really think, why are you even here together? And they're sitting there with their meals in front of them on their phone. That's right. right. They could be anywhere um, on their own. Yeah, they're not talking on the phone. They're playing on it, right? playing a game or texting someone or whatever, right? And they might even be texting each other. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but it is a complete... And, and I, I really... I don't like it because I think conversation is important. And I believe conversation... Because we are, well, look, we are stuck with language. We've discussed this before. We don't think language is ideal. We don't think language, spoken language, is the best way to communicate but um, well unless we get the left back then it's the best that we have it's the best that we have because you can't talk to someone over a device you can send emoticons you know emojis whatever you're going to call them these days or you know you can you can have acronyms as well you're sending them through but there's no there's no true content delivered to you you don't understand what the person's saying we need we need body language we need to look at the person ideally right um, I mean on the phone even if you can tell if somebody's smiling when they're you can't and That's you can right. tell when they're not smiling at least you can hear there's some, there's some mm -hmm. clues there's no clues at all when you're texting someone and that's why people like to hide behind this it's it's, it's a um it's anonymous it's it's safe you know i feel i feel protected and that's why bullying is, is as bad as it is because i can i can do whatever i want there's no there's no consequences i can say what i want i can oh, i'm actually saying i'm typing it Right. 
So you're right, Dave. What we're seeing is a complete move away from any collective or community feeling mm -hmm. that we might have at one point. Not in every country, but certainly in the Western world. Do you know, and, do you know it, it goes it even, yeah. even in the family situation where you're watching television together. That doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. And you try to sit down and watch one movie together, forget no, exactly. everyone's in yeah. different directions. Yes, 100%. And they can. We have enabled people to do this. Oh, the, the great age of enablement. That's very, um, well, is it? <laughs> is it enablement or is it increased isolation? You know, I mean, there's some sci fi movies, some sci fi isolation. stories around this. It is isolation. Right? It's, people it's will... enabled isolation, is what it's done. Yeah. But like it's the we will be part. locked up. I don't want to yeah. share that experience. But I want to do something for me. Yeah, that's what so I we, think. We, is we have we, we have accepted we have accepted living in, in, in the cave. So so only very quickly mm -hmm. bear with me. Talk about Plato. Plato, two and a half thousand years ago, a uh, Greek philosopher, meaning really just a Greek thinker. He was a great thinker. Uh, he happened to be Greek, he could have been anything else, but he was Greek, so there it is. Uh, he, he talked about something called the cave allegory, right? Now, the cave allegory is a whole bunch of people sitting in a cave, and they're looking at one wall of the cave. That's it. Their, their heads are locked in position, they can't escape, they're looking at that uh, cave wall. And, and there are shadows playing on that cave wall, right? There are shadows, and these shadows, they believe, it's life. They believe that's life, um, and so that's that's what they see, and that's all they see. One day, one of them uh, manages to escape his constraints. You know, they can't look left or right. Even they look at the wall, but he manages to stairs, you know, out of the cave into the real world. And he goes, "Oh my God, what is all this? Jeez, look at this! Oh my! Oh wow! Sky and the birds, whatever." And he so experienced it. Then he goes, "Oh, you know, I really should go and tell my fellow cave dwellers that this is the real world." and not what they see every day. And if this sounds like the Matrix, it is. Okay, the Markovsky brothers are not as original as you thought they were. <laughs> okay? Um, but, uh, so he goes back into the cave, right? He runs down and he tries to shake his fellow cave dwellers, his fellow, his fellow uh, troglodytes. Guys! This is not the real world. These are just shadows on, on, a, on, a, on, a, on a wall. That it's not real. And they go, what do you mean? I went out to the real world, the sky and the birds and the blue, you know, and it was wonderful and the clouds and trees and and they, they look at him and, and they, they don't understand, right? Come, come with me. And and of course what they do is they beat him to death. Right? Yes, they beat course. him to death. And they, they go back to looking at at the at the cave wall. Now we we, we as sophisticated as we are, have have uh, replaced the cave wall with a uh, Two by four screen, uh, which we think is the real world. We, so we look at our devices, right, and our little cave walls individually. Try to pry someone away from it. You try to pry someone away from that screen, right? right? Especially children. Good luck unless to you. you have a bigger and, and screen. And we choose. <laughs> unless you've got a bigger screen, and we choose to to believe, or maybe not believe. We choose to to live that screen as our reality. We believe mm -hmm. that's this is it, and. There are now disorders, we've spoken about this before, there are disorders associated with uh, instant gratification or instant uh, responses to something that you post online. So maybe Facebook, Twitter, Spotify, whatever you use, I don't know, right? And you're posting something. If you don't get an immediate response from strangers, your friends, anyone, it doesn't really matter, like in, in the form of likes or comments or emoticons or something, right? Mm -hmm. You actually feel depressed. It's, it's, you go into depression. That's actually a thing now. It's a thing. Uh, we, we are addicted. To, to, to this stuff, right, as a, as a civilization. Think about this way. These devices now cost between one and $2,000. Between right. one and $2,000. And a lot of people buy a new one every year because you have to have a new one. I Bigger used screen. to do that, and Better I jumped this. off that bandwagon. And look, yeah, if, and if you think it's one to $2,000 one, one to $2, <laughs> for a device, you're thinking about new. So there's people who are receiving... Yeah, yeah, a, a yeah. machine that's new to them and they're doing it now if you thought this was a first world problem it isn't oh, it's not it's now a global issue and this global issue is driving one of the most me centric generations like it's a change i tell you i'm watching a movie with my family i think i'm 
I've, you know, my phone is put down, face down, it's on silent, I'm watching the film, and suddenly I hear a chuckle that doesn't seem to be related to the show that I'm watching, and then I hear, oh, you've got to have a look at this. And I'm handed a phone with an emoji or something or a video or a funny cat, whatever it is, right? A cute dog. Yeah. And, oh, I, have, yeah. I don't care. I'm watching the film. Now, aren't we having a collective experience? That's my complaint, is this loss of collective experience. Now we're all going in our different directions. And I could have, at some point, Mackie, I could have said to you that a person of a particular age would have experienced this, these kinds of things in their life. And you can, you know, those, um, those psychometric tests, which yeah, yeah, yeah. unfortunately are out of date now and don't work quite in the same way as they used to. Um, were able to, because of people's, you know, generated experience, um, estimated experience, the experience we expect someone in a civilization to have encountered would work and work very well. But now this me generation, oh my goodness, I have to tell you, Mickey, part of the tinfoil hat zone, right, that we're in, I know a lot of people that have touched on all of these conspiratorial things that we talk about, but have seen it and don't know any more. They've seen it. They've got, you know, no way of judging it for its facts or not. And they park it. And when they come to me, there's 20 year olds, right? 20 year old comes up yeah. to me and goes, oh, mm -hmm. you, you talk about this conspiracy. Mm -hmm. Tell me about this. And now they'll, they'll run through a number of them and I give my opinion, but I say, well, what's your opinion? I don't really have one on it. You know, because they're, they're not, they're not being taught how to generate an opinion by doing any kind of journalism, by not examining information and seeing it from multiple sources. And they're not seeing, they're not given the tools. And you said about changing yeah. the education yeah. system. Yeah. I'll throw it to you. Yeah. The changed education system is just making an office worker. And that's going to be redundant anyway. Yes. 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 Over right. you in the studio. We we are in a, in a death. No no no. We we are in a death spiral now, right? Mm -hmm. Death is, and you're right. And um, we, we we have created these these um, non-critical thinkers. Now, critical thinking is not negative thinking. Right? People always confuse that. Critical thinking simply means you look at information and you analyze it, right, as best as you can with the tools at your disposal. And you're right, Dave. Children that are coming. Through now and you know, younger, younger adults um, do, do no, long, no longer have those tools. Not, not every, not everyone. I mean, some some kids go to private or homeschooled. You know, Montessori uh, seems seems to be a okay mm. to think of Steiner schools, things mm. like that. So, so there's some there are some there are some uh, schools or, or um, uh, you know uh, educational institutions that don't follow the the, gov the government lead on this. And that, that's that's good because that. Gives us some hope, but you just uh, you brought you said something earlier about psychometric testing, mm -hmm. uh, and I saw this wonderful meme, and I think it really sums it up. Um, on Facebook, it says you are going to spend hours on a test trying to figure out what kind of potato you are, <laughs> <laughs> rather than going and researching anything uh, of meaning and form your own opinion. I'm paraphrasing, yeah, yeah, but yeah. it's true. I mean, there, there are these tests out on Facebook that says, "What kind of potato are you?" And there's like 20 questions or 50 questions. Oh, you're an Idaho potato, or you're an Irish blue, or whatever. Right? Oh, you're a sweet potato, you are. And it is, it is really, it is really, it's really that. It's um, it's quite amazing that that we have. And it, you said that the cat, the funny cat pictures. The internet is for porn and for cat pictures. That's, <laughs> that's what the internet is for. And, uh, that's, and now dash and it, cams. That's where we are. Dash and then we are and dash cams. Oh, of course, that's actually right. Dash, dash cams are huge. Yeah. Um, but that's that's where we are. We used to laugh at Simpsons. Simpsons uh, Homer Simpson would, would be talking to someone and it would, you know, it's quite serious and then it was you know, quite, I can't remember what the, what the, what the uh, sketch was, but they were having a conversation and you know, it was very, very intense. 
Then there was a dog with a puffy tail that came past. The whole goes, "Ooh, dog with a puffy tail! Ooh, 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 ooh. puffy tail! Ooh. <laughs> and that's where we are. That's where we are. We are. We are. We're living in puffy tail world. We've all become goldfish, uh, more or less. Our attention span is bad. We don't have the tools to critically analyze uh, um, uh, the world, and, and that's that's why. Okay? That is why we are having the problems we're having. If you look at the state of the world, I'm talking about the first world specifically. And again, specifically, I'm talking about uh, the United States of America, Australia, uh, Great Britain, and some parts of Europe, and mostly those countries. But but they're important, and that's you know that's unfortunate. Uh, but in, in those countries, the critical thinking and tools that you need to question your p politicians, to question your um, your betters. If, if you want to call them that, right, uh, is is diminishing. We, we, we no longer have to, well, well, some of us, or maybe even most of us, no longer have the the capacity to to think critically, to to question our leaders. And I mean, look, I mean, look at the, look at what ha I mean, look at it. I mean, just look at the state of the world. Look at the things that are happening in Australia. In Australia, what? We, I mean, nobody even nobody even denies. That, that well, we're not here to serve the people. We, you know, nobody even. I mean, it's, it's obvious to anyone that they're only self-serving politicians, right? They they only care about themselves. The, the latest the leadership challenge and. and yes, power, it was. That's well, right. That's not the point of it. Yeah, Mickey, but it's it's not just the there. point. Is yeah, go on. It's not. No, no, it's okay. But the point the. It's not just the self-serving nature of it; it's the incompetency. Yeah. So, the, the the Murray Darling River Commission that was established to save the river from over draining of its fresh water for farming utilization by selling <coughs> credits and quotas in which it could monitor those, those quotas. And you know, maintain because it, it, there was a problem where the, the river was just getting sucked dry. It was getting pumped out yeah. of there, and and sucked dry, and the river stopped. And the people downstream in the river had no water at all, at all. And we saw fish problems. And then they started selling these you know licenses so that you can pull a certain amount of water out, and that's great. No meter, no water was the quote, right? Well, unfortunately, the mm -hmm. co the commission that was made to do it just thought that was that was su sufficient. We won't need to monitor it, surely not. You know, they've bought the license. Well, the river has run dry, and fish are dying in forty five degree water, right? Because there's no water flowing, so they're just sitting in stagnant pools with no oxygen, and uh, you know, millions of fish. This is two die offs in a couple of weeks. It's so terrible, and the commission now has been blamed yeah. for mismanagement. But in fact, they were put in place to manage it. It's like a service company not providing yeah. a service. Then what are they doing? And mm -hmm. I think I think that the people of Australia looked at that information and went, "Yeah, sort of expected that," and moved on. <clears throat> Why would we move on from it? Yeah. Why, why don't haven't we strung them all up by the highest yardarm and made them responsible for it? Right? What on earth is going on? <laughs> why, yeah. why is it yeah. so light on? Like uh, the British Prime Minister was crucified over, not literally, figuratively, over the no weapons of mass destruction. It got to Australia, yeah. and our our Prime Minister at the time was well, you know, we're just working on best effort. That was enough, right? Didn't didn't know, don't care. <laughs> what? And we moved yeah. on. So right yeah. now, I su I suspect that the prime minister of Australia <coughs> could perform some hideous act, and we'd all just move on from it, and he'd still be in power mm -hmm. anyway. Mm -hmm. It's just appalling, and that's yeah. that. The twenty four hour news cycle. With tomorrow, we forget it. Mm -hmm. But we've done the unless this is a an intentional plan 
or if it's semi-intentional <laughs> or even completely accidental that we've become so complacent that we don't even mm. care we don't care enough to do anything about it and it's not so, so much apathy but it's that we maybe we're just too compliant you know you tell us mm. Quimby we'll just do whatever mm. they say maybe we're so programmed now that we're incapable <laughs> of rational thought <laughs> yeah well the, yeah <clears throat> there's that there's that and, and, and rational thought i mean how do you define that anyway i mean i'm not being flippant here right but you have to have a common you have to have a base to start from so it, so in order for something to be rational you have to understand first of all what you think reality is right so what's your reality i don't know we have to determine that a lot of people these days i i, I believe would be hard pressed to define the appropriate level of reality that they inhabit and because they will go, what do you mean, Nike? What? What do you mean? Like people used to spend decades uh, well, arguing or, or, or you know um, discussing, debating the nature of reality and, and, and you know the the, the, um, the the very world we inhabit. You know these, these great thinkers. You know, and then that was back when we didn't have a population of uh, seven and a half billion. Right? Our population was much lower. In fact, if you go back in time, the population was you know when we had really great thinkers. You know, like um, again Socrates or Plato mm -hmm. or or Aristotle, there was, was less than a billion people on the planet, right? And, and today we've got seven and a half times as many. Dave, why don't we have seven and a half times as many great thinkers? And, and we had that. <laughs> Maybe we do. System. They're all being locked away. I don't know. But, or or but they're, they're do, external do you know what I mean? suicides. Maybe. 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 And I think the food that we eat plays a big role as well. I really do. Because, you know, my grandparents, I I said this before, and maybe it's getting old, but the point is, yeah, it's important. Um, my grandparents, you know what kind of food they ate? Organic food. Do you know why they ate organic food? Because that was the only food available. That's right. There was, there was, there was, there was in fact, it wasn't called organic food. It was just called food. <laughs> it's like a funny movie line. Now, what do you call a Brazil nut in Brazil? A nut. There you go. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's like that, right? It was just food. It was real, honest food, right? Um, and, and then something happened, and I, I'm still trying to, I, I, I tell you that, I'm still trying to pinpoint exactly when and where it happened, mm -hmm. when and where it happened, the, 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 the food, the food um, uh, degradation, at what point was it, the, was it the 50s, I don't think it was the 50s, I don't think it was the 60s, I'm thinking it was somewhere in the 70s or 80s that something mm -hmm. happened where, you know, Monsanto, and, and Coca-Cola and all those you know, Kellogg's and whoever they are. Well, yeah, yeah, I don't care. <laughs> as, soon, as soon as it's like we're getting paid right now, right? Yeah, but, but the point is that as soon as, as yeah, but the, these these people started to have these patents on genes. They started to, um, to put British corn syrup into everything, right? Because corn syrup was cheap. Um, and 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 all of a sudden the, the food changed. Um, Palm sugar. A, a hamburger. It's just yeah, but but ham yeah, palm sugar was bad, really bad. In fact, palm oil really bad. Mm -hmm. But I mean, there's, there's, there's nothing wrong with a hamburger. There's nothing wrong with fried chicken. There's nothing wrong with any food per se. There really isn't, right? What once you start to uh, uh, master yeah, to to really put the salts and the preservatives in it and the colors and the flavors, that's when you've got a problem. And you also have a problem when your rich foods become your everyday foods. The rich foods used to be like uh, 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 festive days, you know, like uh, Christmas or, or Thanksgiving in the States or, you know, whatever, Hanukkah, whatever, you know, or, or Eid or whatever. Might, yeah, oh, exactly, right? Whatever your, your specific um, holiday or festive uh, um, season is, uh, those were the foods that you ate, the rich foods, you know, like, oh, yeah, let's, let's really live it up and eat some rich food. Uh, became everyday foods, right? So that's, that's an issue there. But not only that, they became readily available and cheap. And you make them cheap by using inferior ingredients, okay? And then mass-produced ingredients. You can't tell me that a chicken that takes six days to grow to maturity is the same as a chicken that takes six months to grow to maturity. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. It, it's not... It is not anything. It's not good science. It's just bad. It's it's a bad thing. If you pump something full of hormones and, and growth, um, uh, 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 growth genes and, and other chemicals and antibiotics, yeah, and all of a sudden 
you have this this Franken chicken, right? This these these monstrous. In fact, cows. Have you seen some of these cows? Mm -hmm. Oh my God, they're like as big as a bus, and they're all muscly, and <laughs> and they grow in like six months to to like two tons. It's just crazy stuff. Yeah, yeah. This this. And it affects, it affects us. It affects our brain function. Well, Mickey, fundamentally, you know, you are what you eat. It's you oh. are what you eat. That's what my grandmother said. She was absolutely right. Uh, you know that it maximizes profit, though, right? So profit over people is the only way that you can think if you're a company, right? You don't want to suddenly have morals if you're a company selling something. Um, see, that's being flippant. <laughs> don't, don't, is that right? Yeah. It, it's only profit. So if I've got a company that I'm selling food, what, what I don't really care if it's healthy enough because I'm just going to sell it. It doesn't matter. Because as long <laughs> as you're buying it. Well, oh, that's the music. <laughs> don't forget to donate. 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 We'll be right back after this short station break. <laughs> call-in listeners or chatters are solely the opinions of the original source who expressed them. They do not necessarily represent the opinions of Revolution Radio and Freedomslips.com, its staff or affiliates. You're listening to Revolution Radio, Freedomslips.com, 100% listener-supported radio, and now we return you to your host. <laughs> Guess what? Yes. You're back with Dave and Mickey's shiny side out on freedomslips.com on the number one listener supporter talk radio on the net. So push the donate button or subscribe to the archives like I do for only around, around about five dollars a month. And it may change with your exchange rate. It is in US dollars. I'd like to say hello to all of the new listeners we have out there. I'm glad you're on board and we hope the you're uh, strapped in. Uh, for this ride, uh, do your do your own research. Follow our guides, and um, I hope you come to same, similar, or even a different opinion. As long as we incite your research adventure, we're happy with that. Same, 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 same. Who said that? <laughs> same, same. Where is that coming what? from? Is that the NSA? No, no. So it is yes. <laughs> it sounds remarkably like your voice. That's right. Um, so whether you've they've got their emulator going very well, by the way. Um, uh, we actually, I hope you know about that emulator, that they can emulate anybody's tones, sound, speech patterns, all done using an AI now, and it can sound exactly like that person, yes. even even to the a point where a loved one would not be able to tell the difference. And they can manipulate oh, live, live footage as well. Live footage. Live footage and yes. change that yes. into yes. whatever they want. So it's, you know, running man all over again. Yep. Um, so whether you follow us, subscribe or otherwise, we appreciate it. Thank you very much. Uh, also, don't forget to get yourself some great merchandise from the station's website. You can buy CDs, you can get access to the archives, you can donate money and get a gift back, but follow all the guides that are there and, and there's sometimes even a special or something brand new that you can take advantage of. So so do that, it all helps mm -hmm. the station and it helps it run and uh, and it does cost quite a lot of money to get that happening. Mackie, Well, the, the thing is this, yeah, go on. This is show number 360. That's yeah, full circle. Can't, can't really see it. Man. I was 60 and 300. It's full circle, 360, right? It's uh, it is 360 degrees. Um, but but before we uh, go there, um, to our listeners out there, this is on the subject of donations. Uh, ask yourself how many other independent uh, sources of information you can access. How, how many other independent um, forms of media exist still? Mm -hmm. Some magazines. There aren't terribly many radio stations like this. I mean, it is, it is both an internet uh, radio station as well as a terrestrial. Oh, sorry, 
yeah, terrestrial. Because there's actually in, in Kentucky you can listen to it on on FM. So this is one of the few places where you you get um, the whole spectrum. I'm not saying everything that we say is true. Uh, that'd be stupid. Or, or even uh, you know most of the things we are saying are controversial uh, by their very nature. What we do hope to achieve is that you start thinking like Dave said, start your own research, and believe it or not, virtually everybody we had on the show over the last eight years, eight years almost, right, mm -hmm. um, has had a very, um, not journey, but a very similar uh, final analysis for the most part, right? I mean, research is never completely done, right, and nobody ever holds the keys to the truth, mm. but it seems to coalesce into a cloud of, of uh, consensus when it comes to, to what's actually going on. Um, and again, I want you to, and I said it in the first hour, I'm going to say it again, uh, even on the um, danger of being redundant. Two and a half thousand years ago, Plato talks about the cave allegory. A few years ago, 10, 20 years ago? Yeah, no, 20, I think 99 was when the, yeah. 20 years ago, yeah, the, the, the Matrix the movie came out. Um, oh, wow, look at this. Um, yeah, it, it's it's Plato's cave allegory. That's what it is. That's really all it is in the, but, in the modern guise with technology, right? Yeah, but don't, yeah. don't just see what the movie provided us, which was a groundbreaking, mm -hmm. you know, um, you know, cameras, direction, you name it, right? The story, the story was fantastic. But what it was really telling us beneath the lines, between the, between the, right, the lines, was that we live in this same society, the same Plato world. We're not looking at it with our eyes. We shouldn't mm -hmm. because they can deceive you. Star Wars talked about right. the same kinds of things, that there is this, there's something else going on. You need to be connected with it, Mekki. No, well, look, but that's, that's exactly the point. And ultimately, we all come to very similar conclusions. And the reason I just mentioned this example is because there's two and a half thousand years between Plato and the Bukowski brothers. Mm -hmm. okay? Yet, ultimately, we, we feel, um, you, you probably weren't as thrilled or excited when you read Plato in high school <laughs> or university, but, but you were probably very excited when you first watched the Matrix movie. I mean, the very first one, right? This is the one I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. um, that probably excited you and you thought, oh, wow, this is so amazing. No, well, yeah, I guess so, but not really if you... If you're part of, of the thinkers then this these concepts aren't new to you this is not new right it's just it's clothed into something that's entertaining and, and technologically plausible which you know it's great i love it Mac, and, and so, so yeah so something that you and i had thought about was that there's independently of each other was the very same thing maybe this isn't real maybe this thing we're in is only um, an illusion I'm, yeah, I'm convinced it's not real, and we spend a lot of time and effort researching it and sharing it with you. Mm -hmm. um, there's, there, we've, got, we've got several short cycles on it, and not just the hypothesis, but we talked about the holographic universe and other things as well. Um, so I'm convinced, one, that reincarnation is a thing, two, that it's, it's part of a broken system, that we're kept here against our uh, will, I believe, and, and we're kept here by very uh, insidious means. And uh, in everything we know is wrong, essentially, right? I know it's a big statement, but essentially, ultimately, everything we know and believe to be good and right and, and um, something we should do is, in fact, not so. My, uh, my uh, um, advice to you is <coughs> to, to read Plato and, two, to watch the movie They Live to, to get you yet another. Because that was, again, The Matrix in a way, not quite like The Matrix. It was a somewhat different take, but it had the same intent. And it was a lot more far-reaching, in my opinion, and a lot more appropriate and probably closer to the truth than The Matrix. Because we blame the machines. In The Matrix movies, we blame the machines, and the machines have taken over, and all the machines are bad. I, I don't quite believe that's the case. That's not what I think. But that's, that's beside the point. So, yeah, here we are, Dave. Here we are, 360... 360 shows, so if you are right? keeping count, and in a couple of months, I think, it's a couple of months, we will enter our eighth year. That's right. On, on air. Um, so we started this in 2010 or 11. 10? There about. I want to say 11. 
Yeah, I think it's well, either way. <laughs> it's a long time ago, and I think we are the we are, are we the longest running show on, on Revolution. Oh, yeah, I'm not sure I, if that's true. The, well, we'll have to. We'll get back to you on that. Yeah, but but we've been here for for a while, and we we came on board uh, probably a year or two into the uh, establishment of of the station. So we we uh, we like it. We like it. Nighthawk is giving us a, a very very good platform and he lets us say whatever we want we've never been censored by the station he <laughs> mentioned doing half the stuff that we're doing here on a commercial station oh. with corporate sponsors there <laughs> yeah the, lawyer, the lawyers would be <laughs> all over us. Up. We, we would have we probably would have had like 10 shows <laughs> then we would have run out of material but it's not because they cancel us because we just wouldn't have had any material we can discuss that's just it done thank you yeah, yeah the, i can talk about yeah. atlantis are uh, you a force Ooh, Roswell. You could do Roswell. <laughs> it'd be shut down for retuning, and then we wouldn't uh, appear on the show anymore. It'd be two other people uh, uh, with scripts. It's, <laughs> it's, it's Bob and Flecky. Dave <laughs> 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 and Flecky. No, no, Flecky. It's, it's, it's Ray, Ray um, and Flecky. But today, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> and Ray and Flecky. And <laughs> that's all the same. Um, and we are. We're going. To continue talking. How do those big wigs like our high <laughs> And that's exactly right. Uh, so this is this whole year is going to be high strangeness. Okay, yeah. that's, that's the, the, the theme of the year. Black budgets is uh, first came of the rank. Uh, I actually wanted to go with uh, the lost years of Jesus, but I was uh, <laughs> I had to, I raised some concerns, and then my in my fellow presenter. <laughs> so that's going to come at some later point because uh, it's fascinating stuff. It's because it, I, I, I want to know stuff, right? I, and I, I'm thinking because you're listening to this, everybody, you want to know stuff too. And I, I want to go out there and find out stuff so I can tell you about it because I, right. I find that it immensely satisfying. And we, then we can talk about it. Is it all true? I don't know. I mean, the black budgets today, right? I mean, is it all true? I don't know. But but it, the information is out there, some of it, right? So that's that's okay, Dave. Well, I mean, let's you know jump right into it if you will, and sure. you can tell us about the high tech surveillance. All right, now look. If you weren't already aware of it, and I'm sure that everyone listening to this is already on our side of the fence, and you know what, you might drive down the street and see people or, you know, at the shopping centre or something like that at the local market and understand that they're not, that they're not across this. There's documents that make clear that the US spy agency's long-standing reliance on technology remains intact. If anything, their dependence on high-tech surveillance systems to fill gaps in human intelligence has intensified. A section on North Korea indicates that the United States has all but surrounded the nuclear armed country's surveillance platforms. Distant ground sensors monitor seismic activity and scan the country for signs that might point to construction of new nuclear sites or tunnels or other paraphernalia. US agencies seek to capture photos, air samples and infrared imagery around the clock. In Iran, new surveillance technologies and techniques have enabled analysts to identify suspected nuclear sites that had not been detected in satellite images, according to the document. In Syria, NSA listening posts were able to monitor unencrypted communications, and they always say unencrypted, but I believe it's also encrypted, communications among senior military officers at the outset of the civil war there, a vulnerability that President Bashar al-Assad's forces apparently later recognized. One of the NRO's functions is to extract data from sensors placed on the ground near suspected illicit weapon sites in Syria and other countries. Across this catalog of technical prowess, one category is depicted as particularly indispensable, and that signals intelligence or SIGNT. SIGNT. I don't know if that's a thing. I don't think you say it like that. SIGNT. Uh, the NSA's ability to monitor emails, 
phone calls, internet traffic, for instance, has come under new scrutiny in recent months as a result of disclosures by Snowden, who worked as a contract computer specialist for the agency before stockpiling secret documents and then fleeing first to Hong Kong and then to Moscow. The NSA was projected to spend 4.8, sorry, 48.6 million on research projects to assist in coping with information overload and occupational hazard as the volumes of intake have increased sharply from fiber optic cables and Silicon Valley internet providers. The agency's ability to monitor the communications of Al Qaeda, remember that name? <laughs> Operatives is described huh. in the documents as often the best and only means to compromise seemingly intractable targets. Signals, intercepts also have been used to direct the flight paths of drones, gather clues to the comp composition of North Korea's leadership and evaluate the response plans of Russia's government in the event of a terrorist attack in Moscow. The resources devoted to signals intercepts are extraordinary. There's nearly 35, 35, I nearly said it like that, 35,000 <laughs> employees are listed under a category called Consolidated Cryptologic Program, which includes the NSA as well as the surveillance and code breaking components of the Air Force, Army, Navy, and Marines. Wow. Uh, the NSA is planning high-risk covert missions, a lesser-known part of its work, to plant what it calls Taylor Radio Frequency Solutions. Tailored Radio Frequency Solutions. Close-in sensors to intercept communications that do not pass through global networks. Wow. Even the CIA, devo the CIA devotes $1.7 or nearly 12% of its budget, to technical collection efforts, including a joint program with the NSA called Clan SIG, a covert program to intercept radio and telephone, telephone communications from hostile, hostile territories. This agency also pursuing tracking systems that minimize or eliminate the need for physical access and enable deep concealment operations against hard targets. The CIA has deployed a new biometric sensors to confirm the identities and locations of Al Qaeda operatives. Think about where they're going to be now. The system has uh, been used in the CIA's drone campaign. Spending on satellite systems is almost every other and every other category of collection is projected to shrink or remain stagnant in coming years as Washington grapples with the budget cuts across the governments. And the last comment but the 2013 intelligence budget called for an increase investment in SIG Inc. Yeah, SIG Inc. Uh, SIG Intelli Intelligence. Uh, look, it is, it is massive, right? And, and um, these days, we, we really shouldn't think about rooms full of people no. uh, looking at monitors anymore, right? That, that's software. the thing of the past. Software, 100%. 100% software, and, and it's predictive in some areas like it, and in fact it, it is companies like google and amazon that, that, that have made it possible to, to mm -hmm. be as as, uh, as good yeah oh, yeah absolutely because we give them the data <laughs> we, we freely give them the data to to analyze everything everything we do they can and predict now what you yeah. want to do tomorrow if you you know they okay can. So, so we know where all the people are we know what they're doing they're telling us you know telling the governments they're telling we're telling social media which is basically just a front to all of these you know um, listening techniques they know where we are the biometric sensors you know if you've got a fitbit on they even know your heart rate i'm not just mm -hmm. telling you they know where you are they know how fast you're walking and if you wear it while you're sleeping then they they know when you're asleep right it's completely yeah. obvious this kind of telemetry they never dreamed of in the 80s. They couldn't even, yeah. they couldn't fathom that you, we yeah. could get this kind of telemetry from everybody on the planet. Yeah, it's, 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 a, it's security autocrats uh, wet dream. That's, that's <laughs> what this is. It is, it is it completely. Is. I mean, I wrote a white paper recently and I presented something at the sales conference for my company and I said, 
and that the everybody says talks about the Internet of, of Things, right? And mm -hmm. that's that's actually an incorrect term. It's the Internet of Everything. Mm -hmm. And I explained it this way: Every, everything is going to be online. That includes you. <clears throat> you will have an IP address. If it has an IP address, it's on the Internet. Okay, it's on the it can't. It's on the line, and you will have one. In fact, the devices that you carry on you, you know, they're, they're things, yes, that's right, and they carry information, they have IP addresses, you know, if they, if they are directly accessed or directly accessible online, right, they must have an address. You, though, as an individual, in, in the near future, if you don't already do so, will have a chip of some description, which mm -hmm. will have a MAC address and an associated IP address. It'll happen. It's a thing. And it will be the internet of everything. It will be the internet of everything. And everything that you possibly give out as data will be collected, turned into information, and that will become, you know, eventually knowledge. Because, you know, data points in and of themselves are completely useless. Only when you, you know, put the intelligence behind it to turn it into information do we get anything meaningful out of it. Mm -hmm. So you've got your heart rate, you know, let's say you've got your heart rate, your credit card information, your physical location. These are all data points. In and of themselves, completely irrelevant, right? I mean, well, who cares? I don't care, nobody cares. But once you start putting that data together and you turn into something interesting, right? you, you, you start drawing uh, conclusions, that's information. And information you can act upon. Okay, so, and that's uh, the... So as an example, uh, the credit card, where it was used, where your location was, um, could be how, like how much you purchased and what you purchased could be collected. They, they would know how many people were at the meal if yes. you paid for everybody, for instance. Yeah. Yeah? yeah. That way, then they could extrapolate at that restaurant at that time or wherever it happened to be who was there because of the other people from your friend's communication circle or otherwise went there because they can see that motion on the surface of the earth. They know where you are, they know your GPS location, and they can triangulate you. And this this kind of information is important if you're under an investigation, if someone's trying to track one of the other people, they wanna know what's going on, they wanna see your points of contact. However, looking at that same information in this country, we have a minimum of five, five years that it, that's, that it has to be kept for. Now, going back five years to see where you were and who you spoke with, who you met, is something else. Now, now yeah. we've got telemetry, you've got audio and video telemetry possible from your, your handheld devices at will, should they need it, without a warrant. And I think that's really also truly important. So whether they're gathering that information or, you know, as that person had a, a Amazon, whatever it is, sitting on the table, was talking to it and it recorded the conversation it sent it to a friends and they realized everyone realized it was being recorded all the time mm -hmm. and then there was a there was a recent murder and what they've the, the u.s court has done is subpoenaed that recording of that murder because they discovered that the device was sitting on the counter right next to where the murder occurred so this kind of stuff that we're seeing where everything is part of the internet is probably okay if you're a, a foam a foam bee, right? If you're a one of those mm -hmm. new phone zombies and you're not doing anything wrong and you've and you don't want to ever and will never step out of alignment with society, the current civil place that we live, right? But if you happen to stray from that, they'll be on you. It'll be like total recall. Yeah. You know, you'll have a wife assigned to you. You won't even know she's part of the agency, right? Just, yeah. just saying. Yeah. This is planned, Mickey. Back to you. No, but look, that's uh, that's exactly right. I completely agree. Now, this brings us to the, the budget for <coughs> counter intelligence. Right? It includes the the budget, and in 2013, in fact, included uh, a lengthy section for funding uh, for counter intelligence. Uh, programs designed to protect against the danger posed by foreign intelligence services, as well as betrayals from within the U.S. spy ranks, obviously, you know, double, you know, double agents and so forth. The document describes pro programs to mitigate 
insider threats by trusted insiders who seek to exploit their authorized access to sensitive information to harm U.S. interests. The agencies had budgeted for a major counterintelligence initiative in fiscal 2012, but most of those resources were diverted to an all-hands emergency response to successive floods of classified data released by the anti <laughs> For this year, I can't believe it's been this long, right? For this year, which is 2013, the budget promised a renewed focus on safeguarding classified networks and a strict review of high-risk, high-gain applicants and contractors. The young, non-traditional computer codes, coders rather, with skills the NSA needed and still needs. Among them was Snowden, <laughs> then a 29-year-old contract computer specialist whom the NSA trained to circumvent computer network security. He was copying thousands of highly classified documents at an NSA facility in Hawaii and preparing to leak them as the agency embarked on the new security sweep. NSA will initiate a minimum of 4,000 periodic reinvestigations of potential insider compromise of sensitive information according to the budget, scanning its systems for anomalies and alerts. So that's where we're at. And this was back in uh, 2013. The next section of the show, we're going to talk about a book that's called uh, AD, After Disclosure, which was written by Richard Dolan and Bryce Zabel. Again, Richard Dolan and Bryce Zabel. And, and here's some excerpts from the book, uh, specifically Richard Dolan's thoughts on the breakaway civilization. And this, this section is called Worlds Within Worlds. I think it'll become clear as I go through through it with Dave, uh, what we mean by worlds within worlds. Because the thing, the thing, Dave, and you know this, and most of our listeners should know this, there are very many layers of secrecy and um, classified access above the President of the United States. So just because you're the President of the United States doesn't mean you've got access to all the secrets. It just doesn't work that way. Because as President, you're going to be in power for like eight years, right? If you're part of the establishment, you, know, you might be, you know, an insider. You might be there longer, like you know, a, a Bush senior, uh, um, a late, the late Bush senior, for example, and others, Kissinger certainly. Um, but if you're just a, a Trump, let's say Trump or even a, an Obama, more or less, then you probably don't have the highest level of access. And that's what they're talking about here. It's the worlds within worlds, and there's some really interesting pieces of information. And again, these are Richard Dolan's thoughts on this breakaway, what he calls a breakaway civilization. By now, the classified world has moved far beyond the reach of the public world and far beyond in its power and capabilities. Consider this story of a former NSA scientist who spoke with the authors. According to this individual, the NSA was operating computers during the mid-1960s with a processing clock speed of roughly 650 megahertz. Hmm. To put that in perspective, yeah, I know, right? To put it in perspective, it took 35 years for personal computers in the consumer market to reach that speed. Indeed, in 1965, there were no personal computers. And immediately, the near fatal Apollo 13 mission in 1971 comes to mind with its reliance on slight rulers by mission specialists to guide the damaged NASA spacecraft back to Earth. When presented with this image, the NSA scientists shrugged and stated that secret computational capabilities were too important to share with NASA. So the NSA didn't want to share with NASA. So, in computing, the National Security Agency was an amazing 35 years ahead of the rest of the world. This leads one to wonder what its computational powers are today. Let me take a little break here. What it leads me to wonder is, what else do they have? Forget the speed of chips for a second here. <laughs> but if you had in the 1960s a computer chip operating a clock speed of 650, that's 650,000 uh, 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 swings, if you will, per, 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 per second, 650 megahertz in the 1960s. You are 35 years ahead of personal computers. 35 years. In the 90s, 
we got to have this kind of speed in the 90s yeah in, in the 90s i remember having a, a, a 100 megahertz machine with four meg of ram yeah in the 90s mm -hmm. they have had that technology for 35 years now before we go on and dave is going to going to take the the next section but I want you to think about, okay, so, so how is that possible? You will say it's impossible, it's impossible for, for this not to leak out into the world. It is clearly possible. It is clearly possible. Think of all the other technologies that just disappeared. Like, I mean, today, there are still Nikolai and Tesla patents under lock and key mm -hmm. and, and other documents. Under lock and key, you can't get to them. You cannot get to them. Uh, the the anti-gravity car or the flying car or, or anti-gravity in general, it was, was, uh, there was a big... Uh, in the 1940s, I think I, it was 1940s. It, it was, I, a, it was, it was in the in the 40s, and I believe that yeah. we were so 30s maybe. I believe we were so close to it coming to fruition, and then it was buried. Yeah, a television, a, a, a car television, in fact, uh, preceded. The, it did black precede and white. black and white. That's right. right? Now there's there's a whole bunch of other stuff, uh, technology uh, 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 focused things that are simply no longer in the public view. We, we, we no longer look at it. We no longer know about it. We, we're just happy with what they bring out. And everything we buy today, everything we buy today has got something called built-in obsolescence. Mm -hmm. Built-in obsolescence. What does it mean, Mackie? What it means is that, let's say you buy a TV for $5,000 if you got money, right? If you get money, you know, cash to blow, you buy a TV for five grand. Beautiful. In two years' time, maybe even a year's time, that TV will be old technology, okay? It'll no longer be everything that it should be and you can do so many more things and it's be wonderful so you're forced to purchase another like we see with the telephones right i said i spoke about it a thousand dollars two thousand dollars telephone right or maybe even second hand a bit cheaper sure enough but every year something new comes out something better something faster right and at some point you have to stop and take take a step back my, my, my grandfather had a radio, and I now have this radio, okay? It's, it's a radio that has a, a vacuum tube hmm. as a tuner. There's a vacuum tube in there that I can see. I can see when I tune, I can see the physical effect on the vacuum tube, which gives me a stronger signal because it becomes brighter. You probably have never seen this, but it still works. It's a Saba, S-A-B-A. He had it. He had it when I was little. I'm, I'm almost 50 years old. He bought it when he was, I guess, a youngish man in his 30s or so, right? And my grandfather was born at the turn of the century, 1902 or 1903. So, so he would have bought that radio is it in the wood? 1940s. Is it wood or bakelite? It, it, it is wood. It's actually okay. wood. Yeah, cool. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a wooden case. It's, it's, a German, it's a German radio, mm. right? It's got German radio stations. In fact, it doesn't go all the way out in, in, in the band spectrum. It, it doesn't go all the way wow. to what we use today. I know, right? <laughs> That's crazy. But, but my point is, there's no need to replace that radio. It is still the radio that gives me the strongest reception I've ever had and the best sound. And it's got medium okay. wave as well, hasn't it? It, it absolutely does. It does. It's, it has medium. Yeah. It does. <laughs> and and see, this is this is this is the, the thing. So he, he didn't buy the radio thinking, oh, I'm going to buy a new radio next year. He bought that radio and and go, oh, this is the radio I'm going to buy. That's that's my radio. And it outlived for, him. It outlived him for forever. This will be my radio forever. It, now I, I'm a bit like my grandfather. I bought a TV ten years ago, and it failed me three years ago. Three years ago, oh shoot, uh, you know it's not working. So I went, I looked high and low for someone to repair it. So I found a person who was quite far away. It came out and cost me like, I don't know, I'm going to say three or $400 to repair it. It was, a, it was a, a power distributor thing. Anyway, point is, it cost me about 300 bucks to repair it. And, but I, did, I wasn't forced to then buy an equivalent TV. If I wanted like an equivalent TV, I would have had to spend five or $6,000, right? I didn't. I had to repair it. Now, I went to the shops about two or three years ago. JB Hi-Fi in Australia is a big, they're, they're very cheap. JB Hi-Fi is a very cheap uh, Good guys too, right? They're fairly cheap. And I looked at TVs two or three years ago, and uh, massive, you know, seventy inch or whatever, eighty inch TVs, flat screen, ten thousand dollars, twelve thousand dollars, right? I went to JB Hi-Fi the other day, uh, two or three days ago. I went to yeah, JB Hi-Fi, uh, and, and here we uh, go. There, there's not a single TV over five thousand dollars, not a one. Yep, not a single and one. They're they're monstrous, eighty five inch. Yes. yes. Yes, and they're they're all the organic LED and this the, the blackest black you will ever get and the mm -hmm. brightest brights and it's wonderful and whatnot, right? But you only spend half the money that you would have spent two years ago, and that'll go on and on. But my point here is again, build an obsolescence, and they don't release the best of something; they release something just a bit better than the thing you had before. 
So I bought a TV 10 years ago, right? So if I buy a TV now or next year or the year after, there will be a quantum leap in experience mm-hmm. for me, right? So my TV is not a smart TV at all. It's not a smart TV, right? And um, it, it doesn't connect to the internet, nothing like that. So the so once I decide to, to buy a new TV, for me, it'll be like, whoa, that's a whole different thing now, right? I can do this and that, and I probably won't even use half the functionality because I never did before. <laughs> so I don't have to, right? And you also have to ask yourself, why do you need to buy consistently? Why do you consistently have to buy things that are better, faster, you know, and have more storage and this and that. Why do you have to do that? Well, you don't really have to do it. For, for, no, I mean, if you're in, 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 a, in a job that requires you know, a lot of processing power and whatnot, okay, then you have to, right? But if, if you're not, if you're just regular Joe using the computer for, I don't know, your mail or look at photos, you know, and browse the internet, whatever it might be, right? Play some games even, and unless you're a professional gamer, you know, <laughs> you know, the computer that you bought 10 years ago would be completely sufficient. But because operating systems become obsolescent and computer hardware becomes obsolescent, you're forced. You are forced to upgrade and buy something new, even if you don't want to. Oh, Becky, because you know you can't like put, back in the day you can't put Windows ten on, on a an old device anymore because ah. there's a chip ah. pro, there's a problem yeah. that they oh yes. we can't go backwards compatible anymore. Yes. My my, my. My grandfather would have laughed at me. He goes, oh, so, so, um, you know, he goes to me, so you're buying, buying a radio, so, 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 I've got a radio here, and you're telling me I, I can't use that radio to listen to music anymore, to the radio stations, even though it's like, this radio is probably 70 years old, right? Mm-hmm. That's, that's, that's the kind of thing we're talking about here. It's insanity, like, but we're quite happy to accept it all, but it makes sense. No, it does not make sense <laughs> at all. It makes no sense whatsoever. In fact, it's completely nonsensical. All it does is make you spend more money when you don't have to. Nobody, none of us, buy things to last anymore. We don't. We don't. It's just in our mindset, oh, yeah, I'm going to throw this out, right? I mean, come on, guys. We're spending thousands of dollars on things that, in my opinion, we should be able to, to use a lifetime. Gen- right? And for, for, in fact, I bought a pot, right? A cooking pot. Cast iron, right? Mm-hmm. Cost me a lot of money. But you know what? My grandchildren will cook with that pot. My grandchildren right. will cook with that pot. I'll spend Oh, anyways, go ahead, Dave. <laughs> I was just going to say, I was the, we had a council cleanup, and I, I saw a couple of people that put out like forty-six inch televisions, and it's, <laughs> it's got it's got working take me on it. Yeah, yeah. Like what? Like they must have got one what? of these 80, eighty-five inch televisions, you know? They don't want the non-smart <laughs> TV anymore. This is the yeah. thing that I keep repeating over and over again. You just keep them fat and stupid and i mean that in a nice way right <laughs> you, you, you keep you keep them entertained yes. where we have big screen televisions we have alcohol we have sport that, that's that's it if you can keep the majority of people happy with something and you know you get to beat the joneses or keep up with the joneses or maybe you're the joneses getting the, the next bigger and better thing that's part of this whole cycle it's it's part of being a good citizen, isn't it? See, it, at some point, if I made, if I was a television manufacturer, and I would say, okay, I'm going to make a television that's going to be like this, going to be awesome, and I would only expect to sell one of those to everybody. That's it. Yeah. At least one. Yeah. Close the factory. Close the factory. That's it. We can close <laughs> it now. Everyone's got one. And they go, but what what yeah. have you done to make it so that they're going to buy another one? Why would they buy another one? Is my question. And then, got the consul- best one. Then, then a consultant would say, look, we can put this code in, right, so that it slows down and becomes inoperable after the warranty is expired. Yeah, and, that's a good idea. And, Let's do that. <laughs> and remember that, that Apple was caught doing that to their iPhones so that you had to upgrade because you couldn't put the old iOS on it because it had it would slow down. And before the new update came out, they would intentionally slow the all the old phones down so, so you know oh i'd make the choice to upgrade yeah we know it's, it's a, it's a scam and, and it's a it huge is, scam yeah so look for crying out loud um unless it's unless it's in holograms you know i'm not gonna get another big one i i wanted like a six like i think i've got 65 or something i wanted like the 80 something just because it's big i want I want the 1,000 inch television set so I can watch the world in two-dimensional colors. You know, I, I want to sit 
in Plato's world and look at the wall. That's what I want to do. <laughs> we are. I know. We are. I know. <laughs> and, see, see what I do with that. Um, and this is my thing: is I really, I, I, while I would really like it, do I need it? No, not really. It's almost like there's, you know, radio waves out there that are, are telling me. Uh, or as Solaris would say, you know, in her, in her experience, her psychotronic programming, maybe we're being programmed subliminally or intentionally through some kind of covert technology. Maybe that's occurring and maybe we're out having to try and they're tweaking it, trying to get us to be good consumers again. And prob the problem is we're right next to what some financial, um, you know, experts are saying, you know, there's a... The fiscal cliff is coming and there has to be some kind of adjustment are we at the right point where we need to go out and spend 60 you know whatever it is thirty thousand dollars on a brand new television or even ten thousand on a brand new tell why it's just the same show bigger on the do you know how far away from the screen if you have an 85 inch screen that you've got to sit if you measure your lounge room can you go six meters if the screen is that big and our eyesight is is limited to only seeing a small portion of the screen at a time i mean it's like imax is that what you want right think about that when you're making your purchase mecky back to you in the studio <laughs> <laughs> yeah here we are and in fact uh, Dave, if you want to uh, tell us about the um the other example of, of um i guess uh, uh, technology that wasn't used when it could have been because it was classified Okay, so that's not given the mixture. That's a former Another. intelligence contractor. Okay, that's right. All right, so Ed, the part. Here you go. Here you go. it's in a different color. Yes, Edward Snowden, a former intelligence contractor, has leaked the very first documentation to prove. No, 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 no too, far, too far, Sorry. too far, too no, far. No, no. Another, another example. <laughs> oh, there we another. go. Another example was the U.S. airstrike against Libya in 1986. The raid employed F-111 fighter aircraft, in which I think we've only just retired our last two of them we had, left out of the mission, however, was the F-117A Nighthawk. Oh, Nighthawk is in there. A nice reference to Nighthawk. Better known as the stealth fighter, it had been operational since 1983, however, but was still classified in 1986 in a form of logic both perverse and rational the f-117a was so radically advanced that keeping it a secret was more important than using it for this military mission given the mixture of a treasure chest of government money and private connections the likelihood exists that six decades later think about that there is a clandestine group that possesses the following points and there's four of them one technology that is vastly superior to that of the mainstream world the ability to explore areas of our world and surroundings presently unavailable to the rest of us scientific and cosmological understandings that give them greater insights into the nature of our world and the lastly a significant build off the grid infrastructure partially underground that affords them at a high degree of secrecy secrecy and independence of action this might well qualify them as a separate civilization one that is broken away from our own in effect a breakaway civilization still interacting with their own its members probably move back and forth between the official reality that we are all living in us included of what we are supposed to believe and the other reality which encompasses new truths and challenges i know here he's making an inference to technology that is far beyond what we've seen oh, com completely and i urge everybody to to to, to look at the book um ad um after disclosure by by Dolan and Sabel. Um, it's, it's well worth a read and um, it, it is um, yeah it's, it's on the money in my opinion it's, it's right on the money and uh, and just these four points right I mean huh, it, it is it is a very sobering uh, thought to, to 
to you can buy it on Amazon, by the way. It's on Amazon. Uh, it's a very sobering thought that there's that that something like that could exist. But then, if you look at the monies, yeah, just for just the black budget money, and, and I think it was uh, I think um, um, Trump asked for 82 million in the latest one, right? I think it's mm -hmm. been said last week. So so 82, 82 million, 82 billion, billion. <laughs> 82 billion dollars were the latest ask for black budgets. So these are these are things that we that the government acknowledges, yes government, <clears throat> that they are, will tell us about. So this is money I want for stuff that you don't need to know about. <laughs> okay? So oh okay. All right. So so we just give you that money then. Yes, that, that's right. Though. Shut up. And give me the 82 billion dollars. But but sir, but sir, and, we can't afford it. Oh, we'll just take it from hospitals, yeah, education, yeah. roads. Yeah, hospitals. Yeah. It's, it's hospitals. <laughs> the aqueduct. <laughs> that's the aqueduct. That. The, <laughs> yeah, I could have. But 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 what we the, well, that's the money we know. Slightly. But the, the aqueduct? Shut up. But uh, what what really is, is worrying here is is the, the money that uh, we, we don't know about per se because they're telling us oh it's just an accounting error. This is the money that runs into the tr trillions, trillions, thousands of billions, mm -hmm. thousands of billions of yeah, dollars. Yeah, yeah. insane. Disappear. Oh, it's an accounting error. And now I, I, we want to do it today. We'll do it next week, hopefully, or maybe the week after. I'm going to share with you the, the banking thing for this whole thing, where it says, "Oh, you know, clearly there's an issue, but it's too. You're not smart enough to understand. It's it's complicated accounting. So <laughs> shut up. It's essentially <laughs> what they're saying us there. So, but yeah, do 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 read um, after disclosure. Uh, really, really, really well researched. Book and these four points that Dave just shared with us are, are very important to internalize. Yeah, um, mm. it's very important that we understand what, what this is all about. Uh, which brings us to Mr. Snowden, Edward Snowden, the former intelligence contractor, has leaked the very first documentation that proves the existence of clandestine black budget operations, programs that are extremely classified, dealing with technology information and more. Did we really need this leak in order to believe that black budget programs operate in secrecy? Well, no. No. <laughs> I think. I mean, common sense would dictate that this would exist because people, right? Because people, <laughs> okay? Um, many, many people will in fact um, tell, tell you that the existence of black budget programs was obvious and that we didn't need any official documentation to prove it. But still, it, it's good that we have proven it. This, you know, United States, and, but not just the United States, other countries as well, has a history of government agencies existing in secret for years. The National Security Agency, the NSA, was founded in 1952. Its existence, however, was hidden until the mid-1960s. Even more secret is the National Reconnaissance Office, which you probably never heard of, <laughs> which was founded in 1960, but remained completely secret for 30 years. You really think there aren't any organizations or national, uh, sorry, or government agencies that you know about or don't know about, I should say. You really believe that they, they, they you know them all? No. And, and you think that people talking can't, about wait, 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 wait. And, and if you think people can't keep a secret, there's even more proof, right? 30 yeah. years, there's a whole office with, you know, probably hundreds of thousands of people working there and no one said a word about it. Yeah, absolutely. And, and people say, oh, it's impossible to keep a secret. No, it is not impossible mm -hmm. to keep a secret. If you're committed, if you have the resolve and commitment to keep a secret, you can. If, if you are willing to do whatever it takes to keep that secret, you can keep a secret. Okay? You can. But the question always is, what is your, what is your level of resolve? What are you willing to do? Or in fact, what is your resolve to do anything? And let me tell you something. These people have uh, more resolve than any of us because they have the most to lose. They've got the most at stake, okay? Um, now, what we're talking about, uh, we're talking about the special access programs, they're called SAPs. From these, we have unacknowledged and waived uh, SAPs. These programs don't exist publicly, but they do indeed exist. They're better known as deep black programs, special access programs. And in 1997, U.S. Senate report described them as, and I'm quoting here, so sensitive that they're exempt from standard reporting requirements to the Congress. 
1997, 20 years ago, yeah, 20 years ago, the U.S. Senate report said no, nah, they are, you know, you, you, in, the people in Congress, they, they're not allowed to know about these programs. Don't need to know. Need to know based on Need to know. In fact, none of you. So shut up. Again, <laughs> this is the fifth time I've said it in like 10 minutes. The so Washington Post revealed that the black budget documents report a staggering, in 2013, $52.6 billion. Okay, that was back in 2013. Although it's great to have this type of documentation in the public domain, proving the existence of these black uh, program budgets, the numbers seem to be off according to some statements made by some very prominent people who have been involved in the defense sector for years. There is a lot of evidence to suggest that these programs are not using billions of dollars, but trillions of dollars <laughs> actually accounted for. Trillions! <clears throat> There's a statement given by um, Canada's former Minister of National Defense, Paul Hallier. Yes. And a, there was actually a video associated with this, so if there's a link in the show notes, you can follow it. But, but um, it is ironic that the U.S. would begin a devastating war, allegedly in search of weapons of mass destruction, when the most worrisome developments in this field are in your own backyard. It is ironic that the U.S. should be fighting monstrously expensive wars, allegedly to bring democracy to those countries, when it, in, it, when it itself can no longer claim to be called a democracy, when trillions... And I mean thousands of billions of dollars have been spent on projects which both Congress and the commander in chief know, know nothing about. We're talking about large amounts of unaccounted for money going into programs we know nothing about. On July 6, 2001, in front of the House Appropriations Committee, Secretary of Defense Donald Rumsfeld stated the following, and I'm quoting, the financial systems of the Department of Defense are so snarled up that we can't account for some 2.6 trillion mm -hmm. transactions that exist. If that's believable. We don't really hear about black budget programs or about people who have actually looked into them. However, the topic was discussed in 2010 by Washington Post journalist Dana Priest and William Arkin. Dave? Mm. Their investigation lasted approximately two years and conducted, sorry, concluded that America's classified world has become so large, so unwieldy, and so secretive that no one knows how much money it costs, how many people it employs, how many programs exist within it, or exactly how many agencies do the same work. Another person was aviation journalist Bill Sweetman. With in the Pentagon, he estimated that approximately 150 special access project programs existed that weren't even acknowledged. That's unacknowledged deep black programs. These programs are not known about by the highest members of government and the highest ranking officials in the military. He determined that most of these programs were do dominated by private contractors, i.e. Lockheed Martin, Boeing, etc. And that he had no idea as to how these programs were funded. That's just something else. We've got two minutes. Oh, yeah, we won't make it then. Um, look, the, the, the purpose of this is again to highlight <clears throat> the, the complete feasibility of things going on without our knowledge. That's really the purpose of this, this show cycle, to make everybody understand that yes, things can happen without us knowing it, and secrets can be kept, and the world is a lot stranger than we think it is. There are trillions of dollars, trillions. I mean, it's, 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 I, mean we can, I wouldn't even know what to do with the trillion dollars. It's except astounding how big these it's, numbers are. Yeah, right? And, and just imagine what you can do with all of that, right? I mean, it, 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 it should be very million, clear. Right? It's a, it is a million, a million. It should be very clear to everybody that the will, the resolve, the commitment and the funding is there to, to do well whatever they want, okay, whatever they deem necessary. And, and I think that these uh, writers have a point, okay, I, I believe that, that, uh, um, that uh, Dolan and Tabel uh, have it right, that there may very well be a breakaway civilization. Yeah? That, that is well beyond our capabilities um, 
uh, it's been, not the elite. It's been spoken about that they've yeah. got technology so advanced, like flying Walmart sized, you know, interstellar capable, hinted at by the head of Skunk Works that we can take ET home, that all the calculations were incorrect. And if, if this is being kept, in underground bases and being privately developed by you know the big players i i'm on the side of it, them existing mackie there's the music i'm sorry. there it is uh, guys don't let if you can i'll uh, hopefully hear you Thanks. 